This is another exclusive rock music star interview. Conducted by Thomas S. Orwalk Jr. Hey everyone, this is Thomas from rockmusicstar.com with an exclusive interview with Robbie Takak of the Goo Goo Dolls. During this interview, we discuss what Robbie is currently working on and also how the Goo Goo Dolls successfully navigated through the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, we discuss many other topics, including Robbie's recording of the Kiss song, Our Buff Woman, for the Buffalo Rock City album put together by the Western New York tribute band Kiss This. So let's get to it. Here he is, Robbie Takak. Good morning, everyone. We have a great special for you. Finally, we have Robbie Takak of the Goo Goo Dolls and also the mayor of the Buffalo music scene on <laughs> Zoom with us right now uh, to talk to us about uh, the last year and uh, what Robbie is up to right now. So first of all, Robbie, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. Yeah, 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 of course. You know, it's it, it's, it's been crazy. So I know it's taken us a little while to hook up. So I apologize for that. Yeah, no, yeah. no problem. Um, well, I, let's let's start off with um, you know, what you're currently doing right now. I know that you can't really reveal much, but you know, everybody knows right now that you are in the studio recording the uh, your 14th Goo Goo Doll release. Um, what what can you tell us about it at this point? Uh, well, you know, we put out the Christmas uh, record, you know, which which was uh, you know, a really kind of interesting thing for us because you know most bands were sort of stalled uh, through you know, the pandemic, but, um, you know, we, we had this Christmas record and, uh, it sort of, sort of kept things alive for us through, through, through a lot of that, um, you know, with the touring being canceled and such, it was crazy. Um, we didn't really know what was going to happen, you know, so we had released, uh, the last record, uh, and, it did well, but times were crazy. You know, we couldn't go out and support it. And, you know, that's what we do. You know, we're a band that plays our songs for people, you know, and travels around <laughs> like a bunch of gypsies, you know, making making music. And um, we weren't able to do that. And it felt like the, the, the cycle wasn't completed or something. And yeah. so they rescheduled the tour for uh, this summer. And um, my fingers are crossed that some of that uh, okay. still happens yeah um I, I would venture to say at this point it probably won't all happen um but who knows uh what'll come forth i know that whatever we can do we'll do so um yeah. you know we're excited to do that but we were again put in a place you know what do we do do we go out and try to support a three-year-old record you know on our next tour or do we just kind of move forward and and uh to try to get some new music together so um john kind of put his thoughts together and we talked about it a little bit and we decided that being out in the middle of the woods kind of away from everything just sort of in a little bubble here um was a great place for us to be to kind of collect our thoughts collect our musical ideas and uh you know get set up for whatever comes next here yeah um from what you posted on your social media it looks like an old church is that correct mm -hmm. yeah wow. yeah 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 it's and yeah it's uh it's pretty amazing man um you know a lot of awesome records have been made here and um uh, you know we're all living in a little house and and uh yeah it's it's, it's just a different thing. we haven't made a record like this in a long time mm -hmm. where we just all kind of sat in a room together and all of a sudden there were a bunch of songs you know it's it's been a little bit different of a process for the past uh little bit so this is yeah. uh this has been refreshing and 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 like a lot of fun man yeah like like you you said uh earlier um i think you guys really out of all the bands that i follow you guys really handle the adversity of the pandemic probably better than anybody else i mean i don't know if if you guys had a plan b or we just worked out that way but i mean right from the start I mean, you guys never really dropped out. I mean, you know, you you were able to the Miracle Bill Mir, Miracle Pill tour was canceled, but you were able to still use Fearless um, as, as a single, and and you know, a lot of you know places were using it in their like newscasts and that when they're broadcasting yeah. the COVID thing. And then um, 
you, both you and John were doing uh, streaming shows from your living rooms and stuff. So it's, that, that was that was that was a pretty brilliant idea. And then and then of course, like you mentioned before, the Christmas record. So my question to you, and I've wondered about this one since it's it's come out. If there wasn't a pandemic, would I be holding this right now? Was that like a plan B? Um, no, not really. We we had done. We originally were gonna re-release a Christmas version of Miracle Pill, okay. and we had and we had recorded, I think, three or four songs that we were gonna sort of package with Miracle Pill and re-release it in like a Christmas kind of kind of package. And uh, and John just got the bug, man, you know. And quite honestly, I I, I wasn't around for a huge part of that recording, you know, I didn't play bass, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't play bass on a lot of that record because oh, really? stand up bass. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's stand up bass. And I, I don't, I never learned how, but I played stand up bass on our new record already because the minute I realized, wow, I gotta, I might have to play these songs someday. I went, um, I went down to Monaco's music and, and <laughs> uh, bought myself a stand up. So I've been, wow. I've been playing, I've been practicing through the pandemic and uh, yeah, I just actually, played on my I played it on our first on the first recording I ever played it on uh the wow. day before yesterday so yeah how yeah, much of so a, it's pretty how exciting much was a challenge how much of a challenge was that for you to learn the stand-up bass going from a regular bass you know it's uh <laughs> how do I say this like you, you know like you, you you get a new car and like it's just kind of just fun like even if it's like not like the greatest car in the world and mm -hmm. you know you can you know like you you're driving around having a great time, you know, uh, driving your new car. Like that's what it felt like for a while. You know, I, I, I really got, uh, kind of consumed with it. So I would go up into my little back room at my house and play, you know, four or five hours a day, you know, and it was really, really, really exciting, um, to have that new thing in my life that, <clears throat> excuse me, was sort of a twist on what I've been doing, you know, forever. So, yeah. um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, but it's amazing how much you have to sort of make it a part of your life to actually do it competent, you know, fairly competently. And trust me, I am like at best marginally fairly competent at it, but like it's, <laughs> it's, uh, but it's, uh, but it, but like I said, it's fun and I'm really enjoying it. So, yeah. And, and back, back to the Christmas release, I, I think it was, was brilliant because it really, again, kept you guys in the spotlight and, and, you know, in the future, you can, can do so much with it. I mean, you you can do your you know summer touring. You can take a break and then you go out on a Christmas run every year and like for the rest of your career if you want now to, to support yeah. this and have you know volume two, three, four. I mean it, yeah. it was really a brilliant brilliant idea. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Well, like I said, John John just kind of like it 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 started uh, like it it was amazing. There was just another song or another song or another song. Yeah. you know, and I was like, oh okay. <laughs> This is, you know, this is great, you know, and it opened up some great TV opportunities for us exactly. over the holidays, you know, um, you know, we have, we've had a great relationship with the Macy's parade folks, you know, and um, so when it came time to actually put together this, this uh, virtual parade that they put together, I think, you know, they, you know, they reached out to us because, you know, we know the drill, <laughs> yeah. we've been through it, you know, and uh so I think that was great. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, it just all fell together. And, you know, John is so good at doing those acoustic things. You know, he, he's been doing them, you know, our whole career. You know, I, it was sort of something that was a little bit newer to me, you know. And so, you know, I, of course, got to put a funny nose and glasses on it, you know, like, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, because that's just sort of my riff. But like, you know, uh, I think it was it was fun to kind of explore some of those parts you know that that uh you know we weren't forced to before yeah. you know and i and i think a lot of musicians have kind of discovered that you know through this pandemic like i think you're gonna see like in life in general quite honestly like a lot of transformational uh coincidences you know that people discovered they can do things you know people yeah you know, you know, learn something new about themselves, you know, um, you know, learned a new way that their businesses can function, you know, learned a new way that, <laughs> you know, learn they can speak Italian, you know, whatever, you know, like, um, you know, I think that that could be, you know, one of the silver linings of this crazy thing. And by the way, I'm getting my shot today. 
Oh, are you? Shot number <laughs> oh, yeah. one or shot one? No, shot number one, man. The Fauci All right, good. All right, good, good. <laughs> awesome, awesome to hear. Um, my next question I wanted to ask you um, was about uh, mu music is art. That was another challenge that you had over the year. And I think, again, successfully, um, you were able to navigate through that and had a, you know, real entertain. You made it very entertaining, the stream that you had. And uh, it, it, yeah, it, came, that, that... it came for a bad time for you because, you know, your last one that you had, I thought was the most successful one you had at the Riverworks. Mm, yeah. Everyone was talking about that. I mean, you were on the roll and for, for this to happen like it did. But I thought, you know, again, you were very smart in, in what you did and had the live streaming show and it was very cool. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like if you if you had been to the event, I think the live stream made a lot more sense because it was done with the same abandon, reckless abandon and lack of knowledge that that <laughs> that that the festival is done with. And um, we learned a lot. Uh, but once again, let's talk about those silver linings. You know, I think the thing that we learned was that the Buffalo expats and the folks who are uh, sympathetic and loving of, uh, of our community and our city here are all over the world right now. And like, they got a chance to be involved. And I was like, wow. I was like, why didn't I think of this five years ago? Yeah. You know, like all of a sudden it was like, you know, there were people in Australia talking about music is art. You know, there were people, you know, in the UK, you know, we, you know, I had, <clears throat> we did the, the uh, Bruce Mosier channel, you know, where, you know, we did some tributes to Bruce and such and reached out to some, uh, some of, uh, 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 you know, uh, Bruce's uh, uh, friends and, and, you know, and uh, clients over the years, you know, yeah. who were, you know, so appreciative of what he did. And, uh, you know, that brought in all these other groups of people. And it was like, all of a sudden I was like, <clears throat> you know, like the light bulb went off over my head, you know, and I was like, yeah. oh, this is, this is really kind of something that we should probably think about doing. So, so it, so we, we probably will incorporate that into whatever um, happens this year. I don't know. You know, I, I heard Allentown just canceled. Yeah. I heard, uh, but I, but I heard Taste of Buffalo is going to happen. Um you know, a canal fest canceled, but I heard, you know, like some things are happening, some things are not happening. And um, so we've got a couple of plans in, in place right now. You know, it's been tough, uh, obviously, you know, funding, you know, uh, music is art being the, the uh, uh, it, 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 it's a hugely volunteer based organization, but without our paid staff like like it's really difficult and we yeah. had and we've had some furlough situations through this and and um but we're regrouping now and and luckily the people who work with um music is art sarah and tracy and and uh everyone else i mean they've they, they've got such a commitment to what this does with the community that I'm positive we're going to make it through this situation, you know? And yeah, um, yeah but uh, you know, uh, the community's always been really supportive of it. So I know we're going to make something really, really cool happen. I just can't really tell you what it is yet. Yeah, I, got you. I, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, in, in what, September, like the second week in September, correct? Yeah. 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 So I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe by then everything would be clear to have it like, Maybe. Man, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. You know, I mean, I mean, like it's so day by day right now, you know, um, I feel like, you know, once again, as I mentioned, the funding sources are tough, you know, right now yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's tough for sponsorships. It's tough for funders, but, you know, um, we always manage to pull it off, you know, and, um, you know, I'm 100% positive that we will make it happen and it will be spectacularly weird and yeah. uh, awesome as it always is. Yeah. Awesome. Um, with, with that, I, I, I often wondered um, if you ever thought of maybe having like a, uh, a Goo Goo Dolls convention, like in Buffalo, where like one time a year, you know, all fans from all over the world could fly into Buffalo and you and John could do like an acoustic set and you could have some like, you know, Goo Goo Doll merchandise vendors and collectors and stuff like that. Kind of like wow. what Kip used to do. Yeah, have I was going to say Kiss Con, man. Yeah, exactly. Like Goo, right. uh, Goo, uh, Goo Con. 
Yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, in reading, you know, in like seeing some of the fan reactions that over the yeah. years, I mean, I've been following you guys since like pretty much 86, <laughs> but everyone always talks, hey, is there anything I'm coming to Buffalo? Is there anything I can check out, you know, Goo Goo Doll related? Mm-hmm. And I, I always thought, yeah. well, that'd be cool if they had like one particular like, you know, event where it was like, you know, everyone could come down to Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. That might even be fun to connect to like a Buffalo uh, performance or something, maybe like exactly. day before or something like that. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a really cool idea. We should oh. talk more about that. All right, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, one of the other things that that you did um, uh, during your well, actually, maybe a little bit before the whole pandemic hit, was you recorded a hard luck woman for a uh, Buffalo ch- uh, charity record, Buffalo yeah. Rock City. And um, yeah. you, you know, we we spoke before, and I know that you're kind of a Kiss fan. Um, I yeah. wondered why did you pick that particular song to uh to sing them for the record? Uh, quite honestly, uh, uh. Uh, my friends in Kiss This came came to me with that song and said, you know, hey, we got this song. You know, we 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 always thought, you know, that you'd sing this song really well. And I I I sort of laughed. That that to me has always been like such an uncharacteristic Kiss song, you know. Like, yeah. and I'm I'm like a fan of like you know late '60s, early '70s rock, you know. And like to me, that always felt like a Rod Stewart song you know like I, i'm a yeah. huge like you know faces fan and stuff and like like so like i always really dug that song you know but then i found out that paul actually wrote that song like like i mean that song was written for you know you know for him so yeah, like was, yeah. You, yeah so like 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 after i researched it a little bit you know um i kind of discovered that and and, and uh you know, it's funny. It was met with varying degrees of uh, of uh, appreciation from Kiss fans. You know, because <laughs> because because they're tough, man. You know, yeah, they but, are. Um, yeah, yeah. But like, you know, um, I felt like that was just coincidentally the kind of song that I that that I should sing if I was going to yeah. do that kind of thing. You know, so so I felt like it worked out really well. No, it, it was brilliant. And then since we're on the uh, topic of Kiss, I know that the Goo Goo Dolls actually opened for Kiss a, a few times. Uh, can you tell us about that? And and that was what back in like '96, maybe was it or '98? I think we we didn't open for them. We played oh. we played on like I I can't even remember what they were. We played on some uh, uh, like multi bills with them. Okay. There were maybe like, yeah, maybe like 10 bands on the bill, but I, I, I can't even, I can't even really recall what the bills were quite honestly, but, mm-hmm. but we didn't meet at that point though, but I have met Gene and Paul many times, actually. They're, yeah. they're a, they're a trip, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they, of course, Kiss was a big influence on you growing up. I mean, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Anybody, anybody who's, you know, anybody who still plays guitar to this day, who's my mm-hmm. age. <laughs> We're the Kiss fan, <laughs> absolutely right, right. Um, I do want to talk about um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I know we spoke about this before, but I want to get this on video. I think you guys really, really deserve it. I know there's a lot of bands that are, <laughs> who deserve it that aren't in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, like you know the Iron Maidens, the Motorheads, the Judas Priest. But I mean, the Goo Goo Dolls need to be in there. I mean, 19 like chart topping hits. I mean. It, Iris has been like viewed like o- over like you know, eight hundred million times on YouTube. I mean, it's just insane. So how how do you how do you feel about that? I mean, you could be diplomatic, of course, but I mean, what what do you what do you think? Hmm. Uh, you know, man. I mean, I don't think I would. It's also weird for you to get asked this question, right? Like, yeah, I know. I, it's. I, I, I mean, I'm I, so yeah. like. I just feel like it's crazy yeah, that you guys I, aren't even like really uh, being mentioned for. And you be, deserve I'll it. I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. I have always felt that even though this band's had a lot of big songs, you know, we go out, we tour a lot, we do all these things. We've always been in a weird little bubble, kind of outside of everything else that's going on. And I think that that's what allows us to still do what we do. Like, I think, I think if we would have uh, attached to any one scene too hard, then we would have been pulled away, you know? And I think we're just kind of doing what we're doing. So my point being, I'm not sure if across the board, there would be enough support 
for that kind of thing. And the other side of it is I really don't care so much, man. I got an awesome life, you know? And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, if it comes up someday, you know, that's great. You know, I mean, if it doesn't come up someday, then, you know, I hope their next party is as awesome as their last one was. I'm sure. I know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I didn't really pay attention, but, but yeah. uh, I think Todd, didn't Todd Rundgren get in? I know he was nominated for it, but I don't know if, I mean, unless he got in this time around, but. I, All right. Well, we shouldn't, sure. well, we shouldn't be in if Todd's not in. That's what I think. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's fair <laughs> enough. I, I would disagree with you on that too, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um i i also there was i also heard a rumor once that um you were offered to open for Def leopard a few years ago was there any truth to that that pops up every couple of years that 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 thing comes through our that potential of a scenario comes through in conversation but but yeah it's never really gone too far though but i i think that would be a lot of fun quite yeah, honestly that, that, would, yeah. that would be cool you guys did the bon jovi tour and i think it was 2003 three perhaps or 2002 yeah. maybe yeah 2002 and then we bounce, yeah and then bounce. we just recently toured with them over in south america too actually yeah th those yeah. were some crazy shows i mean how many people did you play in front of like about a, a, like 700 <laughs> billion people i mean it was insane I no man it was crazy there I, I bet you there were i don't even know man there <laughs> there were, there were probably eighty thousand people there probably it was nuts it, it, it was, was nuts i i i i had like I mean, you know, Bon Jovi's big, you know, like, you know, like we've toured with them, you know, and we, you know, they're playing arenas and stuff, you know, like, you know, they're big, but like, yeah. it's, it's mind blowing to like watch that scenario happen. Like, uh -huh. like in the first person, man, it's just like, I, I had no idea. I like, I don't know. It's, it's just crazy. You know, like, like the, the chaos that and, and and the energy that follows that situation around when they're over there it's like insane man but yeah. yeah that was great man um that was really a gift to us you know i mean john john gave us a, a huge gift by letting us do those shows that that really unfortunately right before the pandemic but that really busted that market open for us now man like oh you i know, can imagine we we got a chance to play to hundreds of thousands of people, you know, over over four over five shows. You know, it's pretty pretty amazing. Well, what is it like? I mean, you you played like thousands of shows, but when you play it in front of an audience uh, that big like that, I mean, it, I mean, is it like any other show for you, or you, do you get a little bit nervous before going up, up in front of an audience that, in that size? Well, it's just a. Uh, I mean, I, I think the only thing that's different is it just feels like. I mean, once like the crowd gets big, it's like sort of like bigger sort of doesn't make that much of a difference because you can't see much further, right. you know, yeah. than what's going on. But, um, you know, I mean, in your heart, you know, how many people are out there, you know, yeah. and, you know, and, uh, and, you know, like on a lot of those shows, like Rock and Rio or whatever, it's like, and, you know, people are going to be, oh, get out of here, there's a wasp in here get out of here um uh it, it, like that's one thing about recording in the country dude i have learned so much about killing bugs you won't believe it <laughs> anyway uh yeah 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 i mean it's crazy like there's so many people and and, and uh it, it, you know the <laughs> the energy level is nuts like like right. when people like when people uh you know, like when the crowd rises ah, it's just like ah, it's like this crazy sound you wow. know it's uh yeah you know it's just a whole different kind of kind of thing but I, I would think it would take forever to come down from an experience like that i mean after you leave the stage it's like whoa that was i mean <laughs> uh, you know when you come down from it when bon jovi walks out on that stage right. <laughs> and you see what happens in that place <laughs> yeah which is, you know 10 times what was going on when we were in there you know like you know you're like ah okay you know but you know i mean it's their audience, you know, we're, we're just lucky enough to be able to play some songs for them when we're over there, you know, but next time we go over there, it'll be ours. And, and that's great. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, um, I have one last question for you, Robin. Again, thank you so much for, for this yeah. interview. And I'm hoping that like after the record comes out, we can hook up again and we can just talk specifically about the record that you're recording. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, we, we talked a lot about um, your, your concert experiences where you're performing, but do you have any like uh, memories of any like great concerts that you, your, your favorite concerts that you saw, um, you know, when you were younger in the Buffalo area, can you think of any offhand? Yeah. Uh, I saw the who 
at this at rich stadium that was pretty amazing yeah um i saw the kinks at the odd that was pretty amazing um yeah man uh i'm trying to think of some of the uh, uh we saw the ramones at buff state and and yeah. and at the salty dog sky room that was that was that was pretty sick um and i've just been so many great concerts you know yeah. <laughs> so many did, great did you still do you still get time to go to check out other bands too or you know i don't really go to too many shows man i, I I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it's like quite often on tour it's like you know people will be like hey you want to go see a show like on a night off or something like that and just like i i, I don't know like the last thing i want is I get to it. hear loud 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 music you know so i end up kind of blowing that off i think that that's one of the things that have, has changed in my life like as i've gotten older touring it's like yeah i just like when i have downtime like i just kind of want it to be downtime you know yeah. like i'm not like i'm not like looking for you know uh i don't know like the next crazy rock and roll <laughs> rock and roll experience or anything mm -hmm. just looking to recharge and go and do a great job again you know yeah that's all. i hear you yeah. well robbie thanks again for your time i really appreciate it and uh best of luck kick ass over there and uh, i appreciate we'll, it man and hopefully i'm gonna we'll, kill this wasp as well <laughs> <laughs> okay go kill that wasp man add him on the uh, add him on the kill list and hopefully we'll be seeing you uh sometime in town like hopefully at during lake sometime in end of august <laughs> right, hopefully i'll talk all to right. you soon thank you all so right. much all right thank you robbie take care later. Bye, bye